It's been a while since I've done one of these, so I figured I'd make a return to them as I haven't stopped working on tokens. My longest running campaign within Pathfinder 2nd Edition went on for two and a quarter years, with one DM most of the time and eventually turning into a round robin for all the players to try new scenarios with. But the overarching setting was arena fights within a town in the shackles called Arena. That served as a place to really throw any situation or encounter at each other. As a massive pirate fan, both One Piece and Pirates of the Caribbean, I really enjoyed the whole flavor of the area and many of the very stylized fights that we partook in. But when the game ended, honestly was pretty sad to see it go, though it can be easily re-picked up and transitioned to a Fist of the Ruby Phoenix campaign. But I rehashed that same setting to give my 5e friends and anyone else interested in the option to do one-shots in a PF2e setting with any character design that they would like. It also serves as fuel for me to make a bunch of interesting characters should someone else like to DM. This is one of those characters, a Kanrasu named Beric. Before I get too into the character, I should probably read what Kanrasus are as they are one of the more interesting races within the Pathfinder universe. Here is a description of them. <clears throat> Kanrasus are shards of cosmic force given consciousness, who construct intricate exoskeletons to interface with the mortal world. Both an integral part of the underlying process of the universe and strangely set apart, Kanrasus look to aeons to understand their existence. These beings are small aeons, which are defenders of reality, and they communicate via a strange telepathic hodgepodge of sensory sending called envisioning. In my head, I picture it as brain movies and audible beeps and boops. They are very strange race of beings as they are the cosmic orb you see, but they fashion their bodies in a variety of forms with plant-based materials. If you'd like to know more about them, check out their page here up in the corner. When I was looking for what piece would inspire me, I went and looked at Ent and Treant artworks. And the art I ended up liking the most was created by Danny Duan from China. This chunky stump of a tree had the body type that I wanted Beric to have to best convey his stats. He is a Kunrasu druid, one that focuses on shapeshifting and morphing its form. When I was building him, I pictured bears, wolves, and other beings in a plant-like visage, similar to the Kul'tiris humans from World of Warcraft, whose druid forms take the form of a balance between life and death animal skulls at the head with plant and rock bodies. My focus stat as a druid is wisdom, but for the shapeshifting style I wanted, I went for a strong constitution and a good strength stat. For skills, I built this character as someone who would be better off in the wilderness thanks to their wisdom score. But I put a focus on using medicine instead of healing spells to keep the team topped off during and out of combat. But that doesn't mean that they wouldn't have an emergency heal either. As a prepared spellcaster, I can pick any spell from the primal list, but this page is the base loadout and plan for arena fights with summoning a plant on the first round for all three actions, then deciding on my second turn if I can buff further or join in on the fight as soon as possible. The summoned creatures at the second level cost would be a CR1 plant, between the Sunflower Leshy or Gourd Leshy circumstances pending. And I can opt not to give it any commands so it is DM controlled and attacks enemies to the best of its abilities. 
More action economy is always a good thing, though the trade-off is that I am down to two actions after I sustain the summons. If I think I should begin attacking right away instead of buffing myself or teammates further, I'd wild shape into a bear and sustain. The bear's bite attack is really strong for a level 3 character at doing 2d8 plus 1 damage whenever the hit lands. Looking at the feats, I leaned into a wide variety of options that would enable Barrack to fill the gap needed in the moment. To me, druids just feel too versatile to not be capable of doing all four of the roles, tank, healer, DPS, and support. Healing is best left up to a cleric thanks to their innate ability called Divine Font built into their kit but a druid can still get the job done in a pinch. Beric is more of a out of combat healer, though he does have the option to heal during combat with the feat Battle Medicine. For tanking, Beric can wild shape, which is what I have in mind for him as a character. They lean into a good balance of strength and con to keep them comparable at the front lines and the Kanrasu feat called Ceremony of Protection grants a plus one AC for a round, similar to a shield. And since it doesn't have verbal or somatic requirements and is a manipulate action, it can be used while shapeshifted. And as for DPS and support, as I've stated before, the spells are interchangeable with each day, so a good mix of spells that fit both of these roles would likely be in the book. This gives Beric plenty of options in the midst of combat or in the world. With the Reach spell feat, I can make Spout and Acid Splash hit from afar, or give an ally Magic Fang from 30 feet. And with Beric's background as a root worker, the plus one circumstance bonus to a saving throw or against a haunt is always useful. Some of you may have noticed that I chose the Ghost Eater dedication for my free archetype. Thematically, I just really like this choice, and as a cosmic orb that consumes ghosts and spirits, then Beep Boop says it looks at its allies just gives me this ominous feeling that I honestly love. I also like the thought of Beric trying to defend reality by cleaning it of spiritual beings that shouldn't be there. But this dedication also has a couple of interesting effects that get added to my unarmed attacks. Barrack's attacks gain Ghost Touch Rune versus Incorporeal Beings, and they are considered magical. Wild Shape's attacks are already magical due to their transformation being a magical effect, but Ghost Touch is incredibly potent versus the Spirited Undead and whether as an arena fighter or a wandering effigy that cleanses forests of haunts and spirits, Beric feels like a really interesting character if a party was to ever run across it. A kindly cosmic entity in the form of a plant bear that wanders through forests, gentle and kind yet having a fearsome presence. A bit of homebrew to help seal the deal, change the spell enlarge to be longer at the 4th and 6th heightened level to just be longer durations instead of a larger size or multicast onto a number of people. Make it 5 hours and 12 hour long effects. And finally, Barracks's gear is pretty simple as a druid. Kanrasu already can't wear heavy armor and need to take an ancestry feat to get something of equivalent value, but hide armor is viable and would likely look like tattered scraps hanging from a tree. The plus one staff is just a nice simple stat stick, literally, for my attacks to gain the plus one to their damage and dice rolls. And then the rest of the gear is druid related stuff for spellcasting and healing. How I view Beric is that they are looking for their purpose. And through the call of nature's embrace with their cosmic core, they found peace within the branches and leaves of their hardened carapace. If Beric was to hit a higher level, 
They would be a mighty bear lumbering through force alone. A giant orb where the head should be, but still producing a snout and teeth for biting and smelling. Cleansing forests of ill omens, evil spirits, and anything else that shouldn't be. Sometime in the future, myself and a friend will likely work together to do our tabletop RPG content on a new channel for 5e, PF2e, and other tabletop RPGs. But for now, this channel will have Pathfinder 2e and gaming content as I really do miss creating silly videos with friends too. Once the tabletop RPG channel is made, videos exactly like this may appear there from time to time still, so this kind of content won't go away, but will evolve further. But till that day, as it will likely be a while, subscribe and keep up with that development, and see you in the next video.